So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Rishab. I'm a volunteer with Head Start. Today we are, are here to cover yet another Head Start hustler story, where we connect with startups all over India from different parts of the tier two, tier three cities, where there are a lot of interesting stories happening, and we will be covering it in the session today. There's one such story that we have right from down south. Uh, from Annakulam, Kerala, uh, that is called Gigsboard, and we have the founder and MD of Gigsboard, Mr. Sujit uh, Bhaskaran, with us. So I welcome you, sir, to this session, and I'm really looking forward for all of us to learning about your journey today. Absolutely, Rishab. Thank you for the opportunity, and thanks right. to Exata as well. Absolutely. So before we waste any more time, let uh, let's get into it, uh, Mr. Sujit. I have seen that you know. You have quite an enriched experience right before starting up. We do want to know about Gigsboard, but right before Gigsboard, we want to know the man behind Gigsboard. We would love to know about you know about your experience and what made you start up. Wonderful, absolutely, Arishab. And uh, uh, so I am a computer science engineer by education. Um, I did my engineering back in uh, I completed it back in 1990. Uh, so I have about 30 years of industry experience. Most of my work experience has been with uh, large corporates. So I worked with TCS for about seven years, worked with IBM for 15 years, worked with Boeing for a couple of years, and then it did a couple of years of IT strategy consulting independently. And then I uh, started my startup journey. Um, so uh, this whole thing started when I was, um, um, and, and uh, by the way, I also, while I am a com science engineer, I did my share of programming as well about for about six years, but I was more interested in the management side of things. So, and uh, TCS has a habit of putting more, you know, load on you and, and, you know, until you pretty much break. So, so basically you get to learn a lot. And I learned a heck of a lot of management principles from TCS and that got sort of showed up very well at, at IBM. IBM is a very, project centric and management centric organization. So that's where I learned most of my basics of management. Um, and I work with Boeing and then I did strategy consulting and my Boeing stint was based out of Dubai. I was the IBA leader for service integration and uh, did that for about a year and a half, two years. Then uh, I decided to move out and did, I wanted to do strategy consulting because that's you know, Boeing was more of program management and aviation space and not really IT. So I came back into the IT space and I did IT strategy consulting for a while. And my focus area was the Middle East. This was back in 2000, late 2014, uh, early 2015 and so on. And I did several assignments and then mid of 2015, oil prices started crashing, right? So the price of oil went down from $130 per barrel, right down to $30 per barrel, right? Zoom down. And for a very, very new IT strategy consultant like me, what that meant was my pipeline was immediately cut. That's it, very, very simple. For very established players, what was happening was that people were, those contractors were actually being asked to renegotiate their contracts at like 30%, 40% of the original contract value with a similar scope, right? So, and that's obviously something that is obviously not very easily affordable, right? Because you have your fixed costs. And I had more than 20 years of outsourcing experience. And I saw this an, as an opportunity, right? Uh, when you want to cut costs, what is the simplest thing, you can do, thing that you can do? You can actually ship a lot of the work offshore, right? That's a very, very simple yeah. way, right? So I went with proposals to several large players in, in UAE Unfortunately, those proposals did not actually take, take, you know, um, take root. And in hindsight, what I realize is this, that in the Middle East, it's not just about who you, I mean, what you know. It's not about your experience. It's much more about who you know, how many people you know, what is your network and what is your influence, right? That's a very, very big factor in the Middle East. Right. Got it. So, I, and I unfortunately, as a very, very new entrant in the Middle East, I had really zero ex networks there. So, uh, my proposals really did not take off. And then I sat back thinking about what should I do next. Right. So, uh, and I decided that, you know, project management is my passion. So, I would actually look at how we can actually look at work being 
executed on a platform, right? So I started exploring into the freelancing space. Um, and I was familiar with the space for a reasonable amount of uh, time. So I decided that, you know, the whole freelancing space is a very, very unstructured space, right? And if you really look at it, um, average job size on freelancer.com was $205. Right. Okay. So which means that if you take an hourly rate of a freelancer as $15, it means that the average job size duration will be about 10 hours, 12 hours, 15 hours. That's about it. On Upwork plus Upwork Enterprise together, and Upwork Enterprise is their large projects platform, the average job size was $750. You take the same hourly rate, the duration of a project, average project becomes less than two weeks. So the clear direction is that freelancing is only for small jobs, more or less. There are exceptions, but those are the exceptions. So I knew that freelancing in the current way is not the answer. And what I looked at was, what is it that prevents people from freelancing their larger jobs, larger projects? And the simple answer is lack of trust, right? A freelancer sits somewhere, maybe in Kuchin, maybe in India, maybe in the US, maybe in Eastern Europe or wherever. And the guy is working on several things at the same time. So you don't know really what is the uh, skill level of this individual. You don't know whether your work as a customer, your work is at the top of his pile or at the bottom of his pile, right? Correct. And Correct. you don't know how, and when you are actually having a team of people working together like this, then the risk level becomes exponentially greater, right? Yeah. So the point is that freelancing of large projects is a non-starter, right? So what I had to do was to actually bring in trust into that equation. So what okay. I've actually been doing so far with the export and I've actually seemed to have seemed to have jumped into the, the, uh, the startup idea itself. And essentially what it is, is I'm building export, which is actually solving the trust problem for remote work. Right. Okay. And so, uh, all of my experience at TCS at IBM, most of my uh, projects at uh, IBM, by the way, were projects that were already in deep red crisis state. And, you know, there were people, other people also like me, who were all assigned to these kind of projects to recover those projects. So I had that knack of actually recovering projects that were in trouble. And so one thing that I have learned from that, or a couple of things that I've learned from that is, I know how projects fail. I know how to recover those projects. And most importantly, I have also figured out how to prevent failures to the greatest extent possible, right? So by the way, there are no systems in the world. There are, I think, no people in the world who can come hundred uh, percent say that a project that they run or they are part of will be hundred percent successful, right? Elon Musk probably has the a very, very strong technical thing. His SpaceX is crashing, right? He's not actually standing back and saying, no, this is done. I'm done with it. He's actually going back and getting another instance, right? He's reworking. The point is that we cannot ever say that a project will never fail. But on the other hand, we can improve the likelihood of success, number one. And number two, we can get early warnings of failures, right? So what right. I am trying to do with Gigsboard is I'm trying to improve the likelihood of success of projects. And I'm trying to give early warnings where there are threats that are coming into the equation that will actually, in, you know, sort of drive the project south. So that's what I'm trying to do with Gigsboard. Okay. So two things there. Uh, you had mentioned you're trying to bring trust into the equation. Right. And the second thing you recently mentioned about, you know, if there's anything going wrong, it mm -hmm. can be highlighted. My question is how? Right. And uh, the platform is very, very simple, right? Uh, it's essentially based on Agile. It's got a Kanban sitting on top. It's got a collaboration platform. 
and there are a bunch of other proprietary uh, elements that I've added. Okay. Uh, by the way, I have also filed a patent, uh, a systems and method patent in both India and the US, uh, waiting for the um, the <clears throat> the review of that to happen. Okay. Now, um, agile in the traditional agile methodology, uh, the problem is this that. Um, what the work gets broken down into components you put them into cycles and then it is delivered so the whole point is that it is incrementally delivered to the customer the customer always knows that the project is going on the right path or not right so that is a big advantage of agile at the very very basic level hmm. now agile in its very traditional uh, space i mean the avatar has a big problem and that is if you really take the basic you know, uh, methodology of Agile, you cannot really predict when your project will end, okay? Because it's, it's iterative, right? You deliver a component, the customer accepts it or says, oh, this is not what I wanted, I want this change, right? So it is iterative in nature. The requirements definition is iterative in, na iterative in nature. And then the deployment is also iterative slash incremental in nature. So which means that your project is likely to be what the customer wanted, definitely. But you don't really, the customer really cannot predict when the project will end. And by the time the project ends, you really don't know how much it will cost, right? So for any, any business, that's not actually on. And that was a big advantage of Waterfall, right? Waterfall methodology is all about a very clear scope definition, right? A very, very clear project schedule definition and Come what may, you stick to that. That is the whole uh, essence of waterfall, right? So what I've done is I've actually brought some essence of that waterfall methodology into Agile. Now there are other avatars of Agile like uh, Scaled Agile and Disciplined Agile and so on. These are all actually versions of what we are, uh, what the business currently is adopting. The larger part of business, whoever is actually adopting Agile, is better off adopting things like scaled agile or, or disciplined agile, right? What I'm doing as is I'm actually creating my own version of agile for this kind of a, a system where I'm looking at creating a, a incremental delivery, but with a certain amount of planning up front, a certain amount and that planning can obviously be uh, iteratively modified as we move forward. Because if you really take a look at any project, what happens is that requirements always change, right? I start with a certain set of ideas, but the uh, as the project progresses, you realize that, you know, uh, step one, step two, step three, you realize that this particular step is actually not going to work. You take a step back and then you go to step four, right? So that always happens. What we can do is to bring some amount of structure and control into this. So that's what we are actually doing. So to cut the, uh, to give you our answer in a simple, uh, you know, two, uh, two words. How am I bringing that uh, trust in education? It is agile. And on top, I have built a Kanban board. Now, what that actually does is you may have used, uh, you know, tools like Trello or Asana or ClickUp or so on, yeah. right? And it's essentially a board where you, you can actually, in a single uh, snapshot, you get a view of what is actually happening with the various components that you're working on, right? What it does not give you is it does not give you insight into which items are maybe in red status, which are yellow, which are amber, which are green. Okay. So, which means that if you are, a, let's say, a, a business that is running, let's say, 20 projects at any given point of time, right? And by the way, my focus is small and medium business and the lower end of mid market. Okay. I'm not going into enterprises. I'll explain the reason why a little later. So small and medium business, let's say there are 20 projects running. Now, if you take a theoretical week as let's say 40 hours and you are running 20 hours, it means that, sorry, 20 projects, it means that on average, you can spend about two hours per project, okay? But obviously that is not how project management ha will happen, right? The point is that there could be some projects where you just have to look at a report and say, okay, I'm done with it because this is green, this is looking okay. Whereas there could be other projects where you have to spend maybe 10 or 20 hours 
to ensure that things are actually working fine things are actually brought back to the right uh, you know right direction and so on right so the point is that you want on this dashboard visibility into what projects you want to focus on right and so one thing that we are doing is to to build in those kinds of rules and algo rule based algorithms into the system so that a user of the platform can immediately see what is it that which pro which of his projects or which components of his projects are a threat inducing item and where he needs or she needs to spend more time to recover i hope that clarifies so essentially it's about okay. clarity but the success of the project lies still with the freelancer absolutely what you are trying to bring in is a system or maybe an automated way of reporting it to the enterprise that this is the status of your 20 projects the right. success of the project still lies with the freelancer in the end right absolutely That's what the... exactly so now there are two things okay so as i mentioned agile cycle based delivery right so by the way as i also mentioned projects project teams can never be 100% successful that's the nature of the game you can have technological issues you can have stakeholder issues you can have simple communication issues right you can have many many things can actually cause a project to go south right you could have multiple stakeholders each business stakeholder wanting different things from a same project right so the point is that we have to prioritize and execute right so the important point is that projects can always fail due to multiple reason it could also be due to the skill level of the freelancer or whoever by the way one minor correction before i move forward okay my pri although i started with that freelancing journey okay my primary focus though is outsourcing the difference is that freelance is in my opinion primarily a one to one engagement meaning one customer engaging one freelancer getting something done right whereas outsourcing is about a business engaging another entity uh, maybe a consulting agency or maybe a, a whatever a virtual team but getting work done through a team of people right virtually so essentially my focus is primarily outsourcing not really freelancing although i support freelancing so uh, the delivery is obviously dependent upon the success or the skill level or capabilities of the freelancer or the the service provider okay now what the iterative model gives you that incremental delivery model gives you is it tells you very very quickly whether your project is actually heading south or going on the right path number one so which means that there is a uh, on gigs board there is something called a burn up burn down chart which is actually a very very standard a uh, report on any agile project okay it basically tells you what is the likelihood that your project will complete by the scheduled time right so based on the velocity that you have achieved so far the team has achieved so far it will tell you it will project and tell you what is the likelihood that your project will complete on time right so if your project is actually not proceeding as per plan and is not likely to complete on time what you have is the option to number 1 bring in additional people or number 2 change the team right but the point is that it gives you flexibility it gives you that early warning right so the problem with a traditional um, a traditional outsourcing methodology is that um, and by the way as i mentioned i have done this for many years right this project management uh, uh, for many years and every engagement is the customer gets his visibility into the project status from two things one is a status report a weekly status report that we send and then there is a governance call that we would have with the customer team right where we will review the project progress right so which means that a big part of how we communicate is actually encapsulated there now any project manager will tell you that now let's say that your project is running reasonably smoothly now there would be at any point of time multiple issues that are there in your project and obviously you will actually work over them and you know resolve them and move forward so let's say there are 10 issues in your project currently as of today okay i'm getting into a status call 
And in my status report, what I've actually mentioned is not 10 issues. I've actually only mentioned six issues, okay? Remaining four, I have actually not revealed to the customer because number one, I don't want to show him this big list of 10 issues, okay? Number two, I'm confident that those four issues I will actually resolve by the next week. So by the time my next status report is out, those four issues are anyway not there. So why even reveal them now, right? Next week, I have sold, solved two of those issues. Two of them are still pending. The week after that, one more issue I have solved. The week after that, that fourth issue that I did not reveal, uh, you know, in the four weeks ago has started exploding. Now, I have the unfortunate pleasure of going and telling the customer that, uh, dear sir, your project is getting delayed because this particular issue is there, right? So, is this something that is a very, very deliberate, you know, hiding thing? It is not really. It is just about optimism, right? So this is actually business as usual in any project. But the problem is that these kinds of things can actually cause a lot of issues later on if they are not addressed in time. What we have lost is four weeks of opportunity to solve that problem in a collaborative fashion. But because of the optimism of the project manager, that opportunity was lost, right? It's about communication. So. In any traditional project, this is the situation. But when the situation is that the team is working remotely, the entire team is distributed, then the risk of this becomes much greater because the opportunity to hide becomes greater at all levels, right? The team might hide things from the project manager, the project manager might hide things from the customer and so on. So things can actually very, very quickly explode, right? So what happens is that the Kanban board is actually going to ensure that there is one single source of truth for the entire team. So the entire team is always looking at one single source of truth and that is the real truth, okay? And we also have other mechanisms to counter that, to ensure that that single source of truth is actually maintaining its sanctity, right? So the but point is that we are giving the customer, number one, cycle-based delivery so that you know the customer knows every week or every two weeks that I've received these components and they are actually proceeding as per plan. Number two, there are dashboards that tell you whether the likelihood of project success is high or not. And number three, you also have a Kanban board which will also tell you on a day-by-day -day basis whether your project is actually heading south or heading as per plan. So what we are actually doing is giving a whole lot of clarity into the equation. We are introducing a lot of transparency, right? And so the right. point is that with this, the customer can understand what is happening. And uh, unlike as in a ready, I mean, a, a typical project, you become a little more comfortable, right? Now, uh, is that a guarantee that your project will succeed? No, it is not. But at least you'll get early warning. Yeah, got it. Uh, I understand the business now a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also like to know uh, where are you currently, you know, as for your business stage, like, you know, have you delivered projects already? Is the platform mm -hmm. completely ready? Is it still being built? And how does the GTM plan look like? Because I did uh, spot that on your profile as well. You're trying to build a parallel entity going international to the US right. as well. Right. So Absolutely. What, what does the GTM plan look like right now? Absolutely. Maybe a three to six month plan. Would be right. good. Wonderful. So, um, so India is a great place for service providers, for acquiring service providers, right? India has probably the largest population of freelancers and also the po largest population of service providing consulting agencies, okay? But India is not a very, very uh, easy place to get into from a customer angle, meaning getting projects angle, right? So what, and uh, you know, when I, I, by the way, the first answer is, where am I? I have launched the product in free trial basis in India. Okay. okay. As of June, the product was launched. Our traction currently is not high. It's about 200 people who have signed up so far. That's about it. Right. Okay. Uh, about 100 odd freelancers, about uh, 20, 30 uh, agencies, uh, and the rest, uh, you know, about, about 30, about uh, businesses who have signed up, but no jobs as yet, because it's, uh, you know, what I've also under, uh, realized is, is that, you know, I spent a fair amount of time talking to people, you know, small businesses, agencies, freelancers, and so on, 
to validate this product okay and everybody said this is a fantastic idea go for it let's build it let's do it this was actually back in 2016-17 okay and even now when i explain this model people say yeah fantastic model great right but the problem is when the rubber hits the road what is happening is that and by the way as i mentioned i have built a platform for outsourcing which means larger projects what i realized after about couple uh, you know 3 months of you know pretty much no jobs happening was that the primary reason why i am not getting jobs is because people want to first test the project you know application and they don't want to test the application with a large job they want to test a job, application with a small job by maybe one day two days kind of a thing and see that this works right. you know it is comfort, comfortable and then they will put larger things in right so what i've done is currently what i'm doing is i also went for a product tear down with uh, another uh, community and they also give me a lot of valuable feedback so currently i am working on a series of enhancements to the uh, gigsboard platform so we are actually planning to relaunch gigsboard as gigsboard uh, 2.0 by the end of january and where we will be improving the usability aspect we have already built in the very small project you know one day two day kind of projects capability and essentially if you really look at it what is the difference between a small project and a large project it's all about the overheads right when you execute a large project you have to do a lot of planning necessarily if you want to your project to succeed right on a very small project you don't do so much planning you just get get into it you jump into it you start swimming right because even if you fail it's only so much that you lose but on a large project if you fail you may actually lose your business right so you take a lot more care into it you are okay to spend more management overhead on that right so we have enabled the small project which means that we have taken out a lot of the process steps involved in the project planning and execution so even a small project can now be executed on gigsport so that is the major change that we've actually made uh, to the platform so there are two variants now in fact there are three the uh, the other thing that is also happening is that we are also building in a lot of usability improvement related changes so that's another thing that we are also doing so we are going to relaunch the product now um, as far as the go to market strategy is concerned there are basically couple of different things that we are doing number one we are uh, we are using linkedin sales navigator to identify Uh, agencies in india right and i am targeting agencies that are less than 45 headcount 40 headcount why because a larger agency will have its own very very set uh, you know defined processes they will have their bd pipeline and it's all set so shaking from that is a little more of a challenge but a smaller agency is hungrier and they are willing to go for you know different options so what i'm giving them is a very open free pipeline for bd right for the agency yeah. you just need to spend a day in setting up your profile and you are in business right pretty much so this is number 1 number 2 similar uh, to linkedin sales navigator there are also other tools like lusha and apollo and data nice etc where we are actually collecting data and then we are pushing uh, these invites to people agency owners and so on so that's number 1 yeah. um number 2 we are also reaching out to developers and testers etc via github so for every skill level or sorry skill uh, language or skill or whatever on github we will identify people with high follower count and then we will invite them directly okay so uh, it's a fairly easy step and many people can probably adopt this right it's a fairly easy step um do we get you know very very positive uh, reaction sometimes we don't but that's okay right if some people join up we are definitely better off and end of the day what is happening is this this last two years what has happened is that many people are realizing that they can work part time on freelancing engagements and make money yeah and or many people have lost jobs unfortunately and they are they are actually into this full time so the point is is that platforms like this can actually give you very very viable opportunities for income generation there is one more aspect that i will touch upon if we have more time slightly later okay so number 2 going to github uh, the same approach for linkedin uh, sales navigator to uh, engage uh, businesses 
and what i am also doing is i am also engaging with uh, iedcs and uh, aics and tbis these uh, you know the um, business incubators accelerators etc yeah right and what i am offering them is if you are a startup and you want to build an mvp right check out gigsport and the point is that number one it's a, it's currently it is completely free you don't have to pay any come obviously you have to pay your service provider but you don't have to pay me it, it's on a free trial okay. basis, right and what you get is a whole lot of visibility and control and if you you know flip on the other side if you go for a traditional agency engagement you get your product at a certain point of time and the point is that if you are a startup the risk is very high right especially in india right because your uh, timeline could be at risk your quality could be at risk or worst yeah. case your ip could be at risk your intellectual property could be at risk right what we give you is the opportunity for you to actually control all of that right, right. so startups would be a a, a a space that we are also targeting so i am also trying to become an enabler right this is also a give back so i am reaching out to tbis and uh, aics and so on to offer this opportunity to different people i'm talking to many uh, people on that particular space right and uh, so this is the early user acquisition part and for the virality part right. and what i believe is that once we get to a certain point this would actually become a little more you know self um, automatically grow automatically growing through a product product led growth uh, approach right so what i've done is i've implemented uh, three different features into the platform number one a preferred network what that means is that if you are a customer and you have already worked with a certain agency in the past right you can invite that agency to gigsport okay got it and so what this gives you is the ability to now continue to work with that agency but with much more transparency and control number yeah one. and the same works for the agency as well the agency can also bring back their customers into gigsport now uh, one agency told me why would i want to actually bring you know my customer into gigsport then that customer might end up going with somebody else and that's a fair question so what i've also done is i've added two other features one is a referral bonus and one is um a sign up related uh, discount now what that means is this that the preferred network will automatically ensure that if a customer of yours you are an agency owner and if a customer of yours publishes a job and you want to bid for it you and you are on his preferred network list your proposal will automatically flow to the top of the pile right now in many of the freelancing platforms what happens is that you have to actually pay money to get your proposal to be what you call featured right here mm. i'm not taking money if you have a preferred network relationship your proposal goes to the top very simple right what that means is that you know if you have a trusting relationship with somebody then your proposal automatically gets seen that's it not right number 2 if you as an agency invite let's say a customer to the platform okay and that customer publishes a job and names you as a referral then we will give you a referral bonus which is actually right. a percentage of our commission so okay. you might actually execute the project and simply earn money from that direct ang angle but you would also earn a referral bonus on top right number 2 number 3 is when you actually uh, we are offering sign up bonuses for in fact uh, head start has also already published uh, the sign up offers from gigsboard on the uh, the booster site booster yeah right so uh, i am also offering these sign up uh, discounts to uh, several such um, you know uh, forums so nascom 10k um, head start i will be i'm talking to kerala startup mission and so on so multiple right. places where i'm actually doing this so these are the three things that i'm hoping will introduce that virality into the equation so that you know through word of mouth there would be more signups i hope Perfect. that makes sense so that so star startups were in head start network if you are watching this if you want to build an mvp you have a project to outsource you know who to reach out to <laughs> thank you rishabh and you also talked about the 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 us entity and as i mentioned india is a great place for the freelancers and the service providers side 
but not a great place for the business to be published mostly to get uh, larger projects in exactly high value projects got it exactly so the source of work would be largely from the us or the western side and the service delivery will happen from india is what i foresee happening and right. essentially i want to actually make that in a much more structured fashion right i hope this whole very, idea makes sense absolutely it sounds very interesting and uh, you mentioned you are going to launch the gigsport 2.0 platform pretty soon mm-hmm. so best of luck and all the best from all of us thank you i Ross. hope you do uh, you know amazing with this new product and you get the initial traction and maybe from the startup side maybe from the corporate section and your us gtm as well in fact wonderful wonderful yeah and the uh, us, of luck US from launch, all of us and the us launch is actually planned for may at this particular point of time there are oh. some changes that we have to build in but uh, beyond that yeah we are almost ready and right. uh, i have already connected with a um, a large community in the us they are very interested in this whole model they there is this community called the outsourcing institute in the us which is a community of about 100000 people in the us uh, both the service provider and the uh, business side right okay. so what this influencer has told me is that he is interested in this particular platform so he will connect me to the uh, uh, outsourcing institute community and right. the the value prop is that businesses which are actually coming up in that particular community can come to gigs code so what i'm currently focused on is building up the service provider pipeline so that right. when we launch in the us and we get connected to the outsourcing institute we are ready to serve the projects that come up immediately right obviously right. i have to have that right population here before i launch so that's right. what i'm currently focused on and as i mentioned there are boosters that are currently available so you can sign up and you can operate for free for a very long time and earn money with zero cost pretty much Right. right so it's a very very open uh, business de- development pipeline for service providers and for the business side for startups it's again free immediately right you can actually you just need to pay your service provider and get the work done that's pretty much it yeah and for getting into new geographies partners and communities always help you expedite absolutely. that process absolutely absolutely i agree yes some some initial handshakes uh, they can help you do that absolutely and i see the growth uh, happening through communities right yeah. so my focus is on connecting with communities in these various regions and uh, by the way if you are a viewer of this video anybody and if you are aware of these communities please uh, share them with me and i would be definitely happy to reach out and uh, so that's this one of my fo- big focus areas perfect uh, i i see that we are almost at the end of the allocated time for this so thanks a lot mr sujit for coming in uh, for this interview i i had a great time talking to you and people who are viewing this i hope you had a great time listening in as well uh, we'll be back again uh, with another session with another uh, story of an entrepreneur and we'll be happy to share it with you so until then uh, see you and goodbye